emotional support to the victims. Welcome to you both. Hello. Uh, Michael Mansfield, first of all, you have a lot of experience of public inquiries. Uh, you may well uh, be involved in this inquiry. Are you satisfied with the way that it's been rolled out so far? Uh, no, because the risks that have been attached to other inquiries, especially with uh, Theresa May and this government, is that the, the victims and the survivors often get ignored. Uh, I think it's excellent, and we welcome the early announcement of, a, sure. of an inquiry, but what we need to know is who's going to be the chair. I thought it was going to be announced last week, but it still hasn't. And how are the terms of reference going to be framed? And once again, we want to ensure that the people most affected have a say in the breadth of those terms of uh, inquiry. And that's why I was asked to go down and meet everybody last week. We've been twice now. Because there's a considerable confusion between an inquiry and an inquest. And what about the government there saying they, they hope to release interim conclusions before the inquiry is completed? Yes, I think um, that is also welcome, but I think the first stage of the public inquiry should be that. In other words, you, you don't get that in an inquest in quite the same way. In other words, you look at the building regulations vis-a-vis -vis fire as well as other aspects of safety beyond Grenfell Towers. You look at the United Kingdom as a whole and you would be asking the question, how has this come about? Have the fire regulations changed? Has the method of testing changed? And if it has changed, why weren't these buildings tested before? It's like the pedestrian crossing. Do we need to knock people down before you build one? It will also, as I understand, the public inquiry will delay an inquest, is that right? Uh, well, not the public inquiry, no. What will delay an inquest is a criminal investigation, which is currently going on into corporate manslaughter. You don't have the inquest before that's finished. Uh, and if, as far as psychological and, uh, and emotional support, mm. what can be done? Because, I mean, it is a terrible tragedy and there are terrible losses. Yeah, uh, there's trauma everywhere you look. Um, and people are expressing that in different ways. Some people are, you know, are being very angry, very vocal. Other people are walking around are completely stupefied because they can't quite understand, you know, what's happened to them. And it's really important that everyone gets together as a community to support these people. Wherever you're from, get down there. Because actually what a lot of people just want is they just want human contact. Hugs are amazingly, you know, fantastic as, as helping people. And they just need to know that someone's there. So at the end of the day, we have a an amazing situation here. We have basically a situation of domestic refugees because of, because of what's happened. You know, um, London is, you know, that area now, Westway, is flooded with people just walking around, actually nowhere to go. Now, is that assistance which can, is, and should be provided by the authorities in inverted commas? Or... Absolutely, it should, and that'd be one of my questions, actually, to local authorities and to central government, is what are you going to do about this? What procedures and protocols are you going to put in place for the long-term psychological care and assistance for these people? When are you doing this? How are you doing this? And who's going to deliver it? My comments, I think it's generally accepted that the initial response from the authorities was pretty slow. You've been down uh, to see the residents. Would you say now that, that the response is, is adequate in any way? No, no, it isn't. I think it's one of the aspects for the inquiry. Uh, it's one thing to work out the causes and the accountability for those causes and who's responsible for planning and all the rest of it. After something like this, you need to ensure that the local authorities and government have an emergency contingency plan which swings into action straight away. So you've got centres in place, people know where to go, as Yvette was saying. You go down there, people are wandering about. They, don't, well, they are slowly being placed in hotels, on the floor of sports halls, or just, you know, wherever they can find somewhere. In fact, there was no organisation. If it hadn't been for a series of local people volunteering to do it themselves, this would never have happened. It would be far worse. So public inquiries need to look at what is lacking in these situations? You think after all these years, disasters, there have been many different kinds, obviously, that somebody would have woken up to the need for an action plan that means something on the ground. Thank you both very much indeed. Well, we have just received the government's statement.